Hell on Earth is in China, Ma Sanjia labor camp, and one man managed to get his story out. Welcome back to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. Ma Sanjia labor camp was known as one of China's most brutal prisons. Survivors call it Hell on Earth, and a lot of them carry the scars to prove it. The things that happened in Ma Sanjia, those stories usually don't see the light of day. But in 2013, this woman, Julie Keith, went shopping for Halloween decorations at Kmart, and inside was something truly spooky, a desperate letter from a prisoner inside Ma Sanjia. That real-life story was turned into an edge-of-your-seat documentary called Letter from Ma Sanjia. I sat down with director Leon Lee to find out more. Thanks for joining us today, Leon. Thank you for having me. So for those watching who haven't seen Letter from Asanjia, what is it about? It's a real life message in a bottle story. Mm -hmm. A woman in Oregon uh, found an SOS note in a package of Halloween decorations she purchased from Kmart. It turned out it was written by a man in one of the most notorious labor camps in China, Masanjia labor camp. And uh, it took us three years to track down the letter writer and he told us the full story. So Ma Sanjia, can you paint us a picture of what Ma Sanjia is? Because it's not a normal labor camp. Uh, well, it started uh, from it being a normal labor camp, and then quickly it turned out to be what, what they call a national center of excellence mm -hmm. for re-educating and transforming people, mainly through uh, torture. So Excellent. In, uh, in Chinese dissidents' words, mm -hmm. this is a place of nightmare. This is a place they would rather die than being sentenced to. So, so when you heard about uh, the letter, it was uh, found by, what, what was her name, Julie? Julie Keith. Julie Keith. When you heard about that story, were you like, wow, I gotta make a movie about this? Well, I immediately flew to Oregon uh, where the uh, Julie Keith lived, and I talked to her. She was very cooperative. And I think I interviewed her several times over the years. Uh, I knew there had to be an amazing story behind it, mm -hmm. because at that time I had interviewed uh, over a dozen survivors from uh, Masanjia labor camp. Uh, I just couldn't imagine how could this letter writer find uh, pen and paper? Yeah. How could he? write the letter under the uh, watchful eyes of the guards. Uh, how, how could he manage to hide it? Uh, and uh, who is this person? Yeah. So uh, I really wanted to find out the story behind it. And uh, because of my previous films, I had a underground network in China, mm -hmm. consists of uh, dissidents and journalists. And I put the word out. Uh, as I said, three years later, one day somebody told me, I think I got your guy. Wow. And uh, we had our initial meeting uh, over Skype. Mm -hmm. Because at this point he was out of Masanja. Right? right, he had been out for a couple of years mm -hmm. and he was in hiding. Uh, he, cer he certainly knew that the letter was discovered and he knew it was one of the reasons that the entire labor camp system in China was abolished. Mm. And that's probably why he did not want to advertise that he was the letter writer. It probably wouldn't have been good for him. But then you come out with this movie sh saying that he was the writer of this letter. Uh, were, you any, were you concerned either for his safety or for your own safety in making this movie? Well, certainly for his safety. Mm -hmm. uh, it was an easy decision. Uh, for me to, after talk, talking to him, uh, to decide to make this film, because obviously we both realized what uh, it meant. Uh, but he said something that changed my mind. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, look, I am providing technical support to the underground press now. Mm -hmm. uh, and these are the people who are the most targeted by the Chinese Communist regime. Uh, so if I get caught, whether by helping other people or helping you making the film, I face the same consequences. Wow. Uh, 
if I take the same risks, I might as well do something more effective. Mm. So that's how we, we came together to, uh, to work on this film. Uh, but then <laughs> there was still one problem. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, because of my previous films, I couldn't go back to China. Because you've done several movies critical of the Chinese Communist Party, correct? Uh, certainly not welcomed by the <laughs> Communist Party. And uh, at the same time, Sun Yi, the letter writer, mm -hmm. uh, he did not know how to use a camera. Hmm. So uh, we too have to find ways to uh, mainly work over Skype. That involves training for him, uh, how to use a camera, how to collect audio, uh, how to take uh, pictures or shoot videos without being discovered, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> how to use a microphone. How, 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 how does he even transfer uh, footage to me? Yeah. So that whole logistical things uh, we had to work out one by one. Mm -hmm. So not only was he the star of your movie, he was also the cameraman inside China for you. Quite often, yes. Now one part of the movie that was amazing to me is uh, at one point he went back to Ma Sanjia to get footage. And I remember you said, you said, like, that's a terrible idea. You can't do that. But he went ahead. What was, what was going on with that? Uh, one day over our Skype meeting, he said, uh, I have an idea. I want to go back to Ma Sanjia labor camp and interview the former inmate guards. I said, uh, that's not a good idea. Yeah. Uh, he felt they were quite close to him, but uh, I told him, no matter how close you think you were, these were the people that could uh, just turn back and call the authority. But he really wanted to go back, and he said this is not only for the film, but more importantly, this is for them. This might be their only chance to find redemption. Mm -hmm. So he went back and uh, he compressed the footage, he encrypted and sent uh, to me online. I watched all the two interviews with two former inmate guards and I was in tears. Mm -hmm. uh, one guard was uh, at one point telling people how good he was at, as, as a torturer and the, the new methods he invented himself and how effective uh, they were. But as soon as he mentioned Sun Yi, he completely changed to a different person. Mm -hmm. He talked about how his perception uh, on Falun Gong, how his entire uh, point of view on life was changed by, by knowing Sun Yi. Mm -hmm. And that's an important part. Sun Yi was in Ma Sanjia for practicing Falun Gong. Uh, so of all of the things you could make a documentary about, why do you feel it's important to make one about Falun Gong? Uh, well, if, if he wasn't uh, practicing, fa practicing Falun Gong, I probably would make the, the film anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a rare story that connects Western viewers to human rights violations in China. Mm -hmm. But he, he happens to be a Falun Gong practitioner, which is all the better because uh, the persecution against Falun Gong is one of the largest in the world now uh, in terms of human rights violation. It's been going on since 1999 and uh, in terms of its uh, scale and severity uh, it's probably one of the largest uh, uh, atrocities we're facing nowadays. And as I understand it, Sun Yi wrote multiple letters while in Ma San Jia and only the one was found, correct? Yes. What was Julie's reaction when she, when she got this letter? Uh, so he wrote probably 20 letters. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it took him uh, more than one night to write one letter. Mm -hmm. So it's obviously very difficult for him to find time to write it. And uh, uh, Julie's initial reaction was that he thought it was, uh, she thought it was a hoax. Mm. So she immediately went online, Google Ma Sanjia labor camp and did his, her research. And uh, very soon she realized this is not a hoax. Mm. This is real. And she wanted to do what Sun Yi asked her to do. Mm -hmm. It was in the letter that uh, the writer wanted the recipient 
to send the letter to the human rights uh, organization. She did. She tried to contact Human Rights Watch, I believe, but uh, it went nowhere. Mm. Uh, so she did not stop. She then tried to find, uh, uh, I think she posted on Facebook, and then she contacted her local newspaper. It became a front, front page story on Christmas Eve. And then uh, after that, it just went viral. Mm -hmm. uh, CNN, Fox News, New York Times, it's, it's everywhere. Have you faced any pushback from the Chinese Communist Party for making this documentary? Uh, not on this film. Okay. <laughs> not, not so far. Mm -hmm. At least not I'm aware of. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, for my uh, previous films, in particular Human Harvest, mm -hmm. which was about uh, large-scale organ harvesting uh, on prisoners of conscience in China, uh, I received lots of uh, interference. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in, uh, in festivals, in other forms of distribution, uh, quite often uh, there were uh, pushbacks. Mm -hmm. What has been the response to Letter from Asanja? Uh, we had our world premiere at uh, Hot Docs mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, I think, May last year. So it's about a year uh, on the circuit now. Uh, we've been uh, in, I think, over 40 festivals winning over a dozen awards. Mm -hmm. And almost every screening, uh, I see people in tears. Uh, I have people uh, walk up to me and telling me that uh, they are filmmakers themselves. They are aware, well aware of all the techniques, but somehow this film moved them to their core. Mm -hmm. uh, government officials uh, wanted to take action after seeing the film. The film screen in European Parliament in Brussels, uh, screening Canadian Parliament. Uh, we're still organizing screenings in other parliaments around the world. And uh, uh, we have lawmakers uh, telling me that uh, knowing an individual story like Sun Yi's journey it, uh, is so much more powerful than reading reports. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, from all walks of life, people suddenly realized that, that uh, whatever impression they had on China before, uh, it just opened their eyes to, to see very different things, different aspects of China. So Suni did a lot of the camera work inside of China. Uh, as I understand it, he also contributed sketches to the documentary. Yes, part of the film was animated. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's obviously it's very difficult to do reenactment uh, or going back to inside Masanjia labor camp. So it was an interesting story. Again, we had our Skype meeting one day, and Sun Yi wanted to show me uh, some artwork. And uh, he obviously uh, he kept a sketchbook after he was released from Masanjia, uh, and he wanted to remember his experience inside. Uh, so right then, we decided to uh, do animated sequences based on his own sketches. Mm -hmm. um, so his sketch has a particular uh, style that's similar to traditional uh, Chinese graphic novel. Mm -hmm. And when I asked him, he told me since he was young, he loved reading traditional Chinese graphic novels, and he would quite often practice drawing the figures on the book margin. So he became uh, quite good. And later on, he uh, became an engineer. So he studied uh, drafting, which also helped, I, I suppose. Uh, so he uh, himself did all the uh, sketches for the, for the key scenes. Mm -hmm. And based on that, we had a professional team who uh, did all the animation, but making sure we still follow his uh, art style. Mm -hmm. Well, I certainly recommend Letter to Master Anjia for anyone watching. Uh, if somebody wanted to see the movie, well, where should they go? It's on various digital platforms now. Uh, the, the common ones, iTunes, Amazon, Google Play. Uh, it's also on uh, uh, YouTube. And uh, uh, we also have physical DVD and Blu-rays available in, in different outlets. 
if you visit letterformasenjia.com and click on watch, you see the dozens of platforms where you can uh, watch the film. Great. We'll definitely provide a link to that uh, at the end of this video. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and congratulations on a really powerful documentary. Thank you. If you haven't seen Letter from Ma Sanjia, I highly recommend it. If you'd like to see it, click the link here. It will take you to a trailer of the movie, which will then take you to a way to rent the movie on YouTube.